In this uh, presentation, I will attempt to lay the foundations uh, for the development of a syntactic model of neon Byzantine music. Firstly, I would like to discuss about the subject of my research, which is covered by the term neon Byzantine music. By using this term, I'm referring to the various ways in which current Orthodox chanters interpret ecclesiastical pieces that follow the new method theoretical system and notation, a system developed in the early 19th century in Istanbul based on the oral and written chant tradition of the Ottoman Greeks who belong to the Rumilet. Geographically, the most famous representatives of this idiom today are Greeks who live in Greece, Cyprus and Istanbul, but there are also Greek and non-Greek Neo-Byzantine chanters in Romania, Serbia, Bulgaria, Russia, Lebanon, Israel, Egypt, UK, USA and elsewhere. The whole repertoire of this music is traditionally classified in eight large groups called Ichi, that is modes, the names of which are Protos, first, Defteros, second, Tritos, third, Tetartos, fourth, Plagios to Proto, first Placal, Plagios to Defteros, second Placal, Varis, literally heavy, and Plagios to Tetartu, fourth Placal. This medieval classification system is known as Octoichos. Due to practical reasons relating to the division of the days of the ecclesiastical year into groups of eight, the classification of the repertoire had to strictly maintain the number eight, despite the wide variety of melodic behaviors. Hence, under the umbrella of this eight ichi, dozen distinct sub-modes known as a claviton ichon, that is branches of the modes, have been housed, each acquiring its own specific name. For example, under the umbrella of the ichos protos, we find pieces of protos irmologikos, protos tetraphonos, protos pentaphonos, protos tichiraricos, nouns and protos papadikos submodes. Sometimes, in fact, some of these submodes are housed under the name of more than one different ichi, such as, for example, submode legetos, whose pieces belong to either the second or the fourth ichos. Most part of the neon Byzantine repertoire is chanted by current chanters on the basis of new method scores that are either in front of them or recalled from their memory. Sometimes, especially for a specific type of pieces called stichiraric, chanters are used to compose melodies of the moment, having in front of them only the hymnological text and an indication for the mode echoes that should be followed. Composers or chanters that become composers of the moment, have in the quiver of their mind an amount of independent musical elements that they should combine with each other in order to make music. Each submode requires specific ways of combining these elements in order to show its own physiognomy or to use the term of the musical reformer Chrysanthos, its own idea. Sometimes the exact same elements combined in different ways produce different submodes since each submode follows specific conventions as to which element is more important than other and in what way. All this lead to the following two general findings. One, that neo byzantine melodies have a specific structure, the elements of which are hierarchically distributed. Second, that neo byzantine submodes have specific preferences as to which elements to use and how to distribute them in the hierarchical structure. The aim of this announcement is to reveal the general rules on the basis of which submodes hierarchically structure the elements of its melodies, or in other words, to lay the foundations for the establishment of a syntactic model of neo byzantine music. Using the term syntax, our minds inevitably go to language. In language, syntax is defined as a set of principles governing the combination of discrete linguistic elements, such as words, into sequences. One can easily adapt this linguistic definition to the needs of musicology as follows. Music syntax is a set of principles governing the combination of discrete musical elements, such as notes or chords, into sequences. In the late 1950s, American linguist Noam Chomsky developed his generative grammar, attempting to discover a finite number of universal rules able to generate 
the infinite variety and number of sentences. His theory was developed based on the English language, but its applicability was intended for all languages of the world, since the whole idea was to reveal how human brain codes and decodes language as a system. Two decades later, conductor and composer Leonard Bernstein, inspired by Chomskyan theories, gave some lectures attempting to develop a generative grammar of music based on the Western tonal idiom. Chomsky led the foundations of the study of syntax in modern linguistics, while Bernstein became the forerunner of the birth of a new scientific branch called musical linguistics, many researchers of which attempt to establish a universal grammar of music, mostly on the basis of the Western tonal idiom. To understand how musical linguists approach music syntax, we should first examine how linguists approach the syntax of language. The basic linguistic unit on which syntax is applied is sentence. A sentence consists of words in sequence. Since most of the words have their own independent abstract meaning, syntax gives specific roles to all these meanings through the sentence in order to express a specific situation. According to Chomskyan approach, syntax applies an iterative merge rule that recursively forms two member sets each member of which may be either a lexical item or a set formed by a previous instance of merge. One member of each set is designated as the head of the set. Let's see now how merge rule works in the sentence the girl, we read the book. We start from the object of the event and we form the set the book, of which book is the head. Here we have two lexical items combined. Then we combine this set with the verb read which becomes the head of the new set. Then we combine our last set with the word will that gives us the information of the tense. Will is the head of this set. Now we turn to the subject of the event and we form a totally new set, a combination of two lexical items, the girl. Girl is the head. Finally, we combine this set with the previous one. The verb set is the head of the combination, so the head of the whole sentence is the word will. Chomsky also developed three diagrams to represent the syntactic structure of a given sentence. You can see here the three diagram of our example. You also may notice that at the top of each set there are acronyms that correspond to the syntactic role of each of them. For example, N is the acronym for noun, while NP is the acronym for noun phrase, etc. Let's go now to musical linguists. Instead of words and their meanings, scholars of the Western tonal music syntax focused on chords and their various combinations. Chords, of course, do not have independent meanings like words. They are not arbitrary sounds conventionally connected to partly exogenous and partly constructed mental realities commonly known and accepted by a given linguistic community. Chords acquire a specific meaning within a given musical context. For each musical piece, a specific chord is considered tonal, and based on this, the others acquire their various roles. Due to the music syntax, sequential chords develop specific dependency relations, producing different types of cadences. According to musical linguist Martin Rochmeyer, we can represent the cadential structure through three diagrams, based on the following two principles. One, two elements can have an implication-realization relationship. Dominants imply, or in other words, prepare the tonic. Predominants imply the dominant, while embellishment imply their goal event. Two, two elements can establish a prolongation relationship. Two instances with the same tonal function can form a prolonged higher order region or unit. Due to the linear nature of music, the head of each set is always on the right, since the prepared event is always after its preparation. This convention corresponds to the common idea that melodic progression is based on alternations from tension to resolution, while any musical event associated with resolution is considered by musical linguists as the head of its set. In order to visualize his syntactic analysis, Rohlmeyer, in addition to three diagrams, also developed dependency graphs. 
Here you can see an example of a Rohr-Meyer syntactic twin diagram and its corresponding dependency graph. IMP is for implicational relationship, while PRL is for prolongational relationship. Now, let's move on to the main issue of this presentation. How could we decode the syntax of Neo-Byzantine music? Before answering this question, we should point out the following. While linguistic research in syntax is limited to the sentence level, with the text level being governed by more general and flexible rules, musical linguists find their syntactic rules applied to the whole music piece level. This observation seems to apply to our case as well. In fact, the most obvious level on which syntactic rules could be applied in neo-Byzantine music is the whole piece level. As you probably know, Byzantine music has diachronically been mainly monophonic. This means that there are no chords in neo-Byzantine music with the combinations of which syntax could be developed. What exists, however, is cadences. Cadence in neo-Byzantine theory is an ambiguous term. It refers either to the final note of the melodic phrase or to stereotypical endic phrases that are associated with particular submodes. For the purposes of this project, we will use the term with its first meaning. Within a neo-Byzantine piece, two kinds of cadences can be found. Half cadences, in Greek atelis, literally incomplete, and full cadences, Greek endelis, literally complete. These endic notes characterize the whole phrase to which they belong so we can claim that they are syntactically the heads of the phrases. Phrases with half cadence at the end cause tension, while phrases with full cadence at the end cause the feeling of resolution, hence the later are syntactically superior to the former. In order to decode how a cadence ends up being considered half or full within a piece that belongs to a given submode, I developed the abstract concept of synchord, Greek synchordo that should be placed between the micro level of the node and the macro level of the submode. A synchord could be defined as a group of continuous intervals which functions as autonomous musical unit within the various submodes. The name of each synchord corresponds to the number of nodes it consists of. In Neo-Byzantine music, for example, we find three chords having three notes, tetrachords having four notes, pentachords having five notes, and hexachords having six notes. It should be noted that the concept of synchord differs significantly from that of system. According to the concept of system, a synchord necessarily follows and is followed by the exact same synchord. On the contrary, the concept of synchord does not itself impose such a restriction. Any synchord can be followed or followed by any synchord, including itself. Hence, system is a special case of synchord combination. Each synchord has a single bass note and a single top note. Melodies have three basic ways of indicating which synchord they activate. One, with rotations around and repeated passes from the top note of the bass note of the synchord. Two, with melodic ups and downs within the synchord. And three, and most important for us, melodic phrases usually end in either the bass note or the top note of the synchord that is activated. A cadence that corresponds to the bass note of the activated synchord is considered a full cadence, while a cadence that corresponds to the top note is considered a half cadence. In no byzantine music, there is also a trick that can help us to find the bass note of the active synchord, the practice of draw, in Greek Ison or Isokratima. The note that is sung by the person that is responsible for the draw, in Greek Socrates, is always the bass note of the active synchord. Summarizing the above, we can distinguish phrases that belong to the same synchord to half cadential and full cadential. Full cadential phrases are always the head of the sets with which they are combined. It is not at all rare, especially for hymns of syllabic texture, one bit per syllab, to have only one single synchord activated throughout their melodic development. We can analyze, for example, the phrasal syntax of the Resurrectional Apolitikion of the first echos, to Lithus Fragistrendos, the melody of which has only a single synchord activated. To Lithus Fragistrendos even from the first phrase, we can see that our first cadence 
is three steps above the draw note. Ta -ra -ra -ra. Draw note and cadence note are the limits of our activated sync chord, which is a tetrachord. In neo Byzantine music, there is a tradition of singing specific introductory melodic phrases before hymns having nonsense words as their text, for example, ananes, neanes, nana, etc. Each submode is associated with such a particular phrase called apichima. My idea is to name the various syncords based on the apichimata of the submodes with which they are mainly connected. This hymn belongs to the first hymnologic submode that uses the nonsense word ananes for its apichima. Thus, we can call this syncord ananes tetrachord. This tetrachord, like any other syncord, has a specific intervallic temperament and will retain the same name on whatever note it is developed. The melody of the phrase we have just heard rotated around the top note of Ananes tetrachord, which is in Neo-Byzantine theory called V and is conventionally rendered with the G note and passed by it repeatedly. You can see here the red notes are V notes. Since it ended up on it, its cadence is considered half. Let's continue with the second phrase. Again, we have rotations around and repeated passes from our top note, V, on which the phrase ends up. Therefore, we have another case of a half cadential phrase. Since these two phrases are syntactically similar, they establish, according to Rohrmeyer, a prolongational relationship. Let's continue. We heard another melodic rotation around top note, ending up again with a half cadence. Therefore, another prolongational relationship emerged. Let's move on to the fourth phrase. Finally, a double descending movement from the top note to the bass note of an anestetrachord appeared. In other words, we have our first full cadence on the note pa, which is conventionally rendered with the D note. The feeling of resolution is obvious. Syntactically, the whole previous set implied, or in other words, prepared this one, which is the head of the expert so far. Let's see the twin diagram resulting from this phrasal combination. The head of the sets corresponds to their superior cadential node. As a result, we have two half cadential V sets, as well as a full cadential PA set that is syntactically superior to the others. Let's see now the dependency graph that reveals the syntactical roles of the combinations. I remind you that PRL indicates prolongational relationship, while IMPL indicates implication relationship. Through this graph, we can tangibly represent the intuition that every half cadential V phrase, even if it is prolonged, must satisfy its implicative role within an anestetrachord, and thus must be combined with the firstly emerged full cadential PA phrase. If we continue with the same hymn, we will identify six more phrases, some of which are half cadential and some of which are full cadential. If we apply our syntactic approach to the rest of the phrases, the tree diagram of the whole hymn will have the following form. While the dependency graph will be like this. Conclusions. Martin Rohrmeyer, in his speech at a conference in Athens in 2019, developed the hypothesis that the two principles of prolongation and implication since they have no properties in Western tonality encoded, they could generalize to other kinds of music. In my opinion, this announcement confirms, at least in part, his assumption. Nevertheless, what we have presented is only a small part of the overall syntactical analysis of the neo-Byzantine melodies. Many questions remain to be answered, such as what happens when a piece combines more than one syncord? What is the way of prioritizing them based on the submode to which the piece belongs? How can we hierarchize the notes that make up the melodic phrases? And finally, can Romeyer's two principles be applied to the level of notes? 
The answers for these questions may be concerned us at a future conference. Thank you very much.